Hello everybody and welcome to the Sovereign Village Project. I want to talk about that fourth dimension that we can garden in. Instead of the three dimensions we're used to, or rather the two that we tend to design gardens around, let's use that fourth dimension which is time. When we're laying out a landscape, a person who's starting to understand gardening and just using the rules of nature, they will look at the sun and say, okay, we need to plant the tall things, tall things on the north side and small things on, in front of them, right? So there, I'm going to plant my food forest back here and then I'm going to put my annual production in front of it. That's good thinking. That's, that's wise. However, many people kind of stop right there and they just keep thinking in that two-dimensional sense. They lay out their blocks and say, this will go here, this will go here, and they think on paper or they think um, on, a, on a screen in two dimensions. And even when they're on the ground looking in three dimensions, they're still forgetting that fourth one because when you think about a tree, for example, that's gonna get tall and it's gonna block out light. But it's gonna take 10, 20, maybe even 30 years to block out all of the light behind it. So if you're designing something to, to be a perennial area, a food forest, an orchard, and it's gonna be really tall and block out light, that doesn't mean that you can't use it for the next decade for annual production. And it often makes a lot of sense too because if you're planting out nursery trees, you need to be improving the soil as quickly as you can. But if you're doing all that, you've got all that space in between those trees. Let's say you're spacing them 15 feet apart. That's a huge amount of space that you're already paying attention to and you could be engaged in annual production in there, which will also make you spend more time maintaining all of, all of that stuff and bring it into one place. And really your entire property can be designed this way. It's very possible to not really have any difference between annual and perennial areas. Now, here on this property, we have many areas that are specifically annual or specifically perennial simply because we're doing a lot of market garden production for this next year. We're just doing a lot, just some basic row crops. We just want to sell some vegetables, um, start the revenue coming in as we transition more into nursery crops and um, more perennial production. But so let me show you an example of this. We just planted this pecan tree here. A friend actually helped plant that. I'll put a link to his channel, Unism, a really cool channel. Um, uh, we were working out today and we planted all of these pecan trees. So let me fill you in on the situation so you can understand why we made some of the decisions we made. So this is the south side of the house. That there is the south side. So the sun is in front of me. So I want tall things in the back, short things up front. However, this was a really good spot for an herb garden. We're building an herb spiral right here. We want, of course, lots of herbs close to the house. It's our zone one. We're walking out of there every single day and the kitchen is right there. So we walk out of this door from the kitchen and boom, our herbs are right there. And on this south side of the house, a lot of heat is reflected. So many of these herbs will likely be not only perennial, but actually they'll be producing well into the winter. Um, we're gonna plant out the whole front of this with herbs. So they'll be getting all that heat off the side of the house and they'll have really good lifespans. They'll get lots of attention, lots of good soil building. Um, and they also, a lot of them repel insects. And so they'll be keeping insects away from our windows and our doors and just keeping the flies and mosquitoes down. Um, so it was really important to have those there but they're really, we didn't want to plant the trees too close to the house, of course. So really the only option here for these pecan trees was in front. So if I'm just thinking in two dimensional terms, it wouldn't make any sense. That tree is gonna block out, out the light of things behind it. When you really get to know a plant and you understand how it's going to behave, you can start to think a little bit more advanced than that. For one thing, this tree is not going to be a problem for a decade will probably be moved by then and maybe the next people won't even care about that herb garden. And many of those herb plants, like the rosemary for example, will be established as essentially trees. They too will be reaching up for light and they will probably evolve around this. You know, whatever light this blocks, they'll go a different direction and they'll find enough light. So first of all, we just don't need to worry about this blocking out light for so long. That's tons of time to get tons of herbs and tons of annual production out of it. Hello. But also, we can prune trees, we can design which way this goes. So I want to make this lean away from the house anyway. I'm planting this about as close as I can to the house and it needs to be leaning away from it in the case of a storm. We don't want it dropping on the house. And also we've got, there's gonna be a circular driveway right here. So we want to take advantage of all that free light, make this tree lean out over the circular driveway, away from the house and away from blocking light. But also, this is a pecan tree, and I specifically know what a pecan tree looks like. They can get real tall, and we pick. We don't have to pick their fruit. They're going to drop those nuts, right? So, um, so that means that I, I can really prune these lower branches. So that means I just have a big trunk right here. So that big trunk is here, and then the foliage is going to be way up there, which means the sunlight angle is still going to get through. So I can design it the entire time. So the, the entire life cycle of this tree, it's not going to block the things that are behind it, even though they're behind it. They're on the north side of it. 
Um, so understanding how the plant works, but also understanding how time works is crucial to really getting the most out of our landscape because otherwise I wouldn't have put that tree there and I wouldn't have put this line of pecans here. I have a whole line and they're all in front of annual production and in front of small herbs. They're in front of things that are littler than them, but I'm going to still be able to design them to not block the light. Um, and that's the way we're doing this whole property. You know, we're leaving mature, fairly mature trees. We're just carefully pruning things. Um, we have a saw on a pole and we can lop those tops off and get up on a ladder. And so we can keep this environment extremely wooded and yet highly productive with low growing crops. Um, so it's, in, it's important to start thinking in more advanced terms like this because this is how you pack production into a small space. Although this is a five acre property, most of it is a deep holler and not very it would be very difficult to do any kind of standard agriculture um, and it's better suited as a forest. There's a lot of protein, a lot of deer out there, a lot of good timber. We need all that firewood and building materials so it's doing a better job just being a forest. It doesn't need to be farmed but that leaves us only an acre to work with so every inch of ground is critical. Of course it's going to take us a very long time to even fully take advantage of this acre of ground. It's going to take us a long time to use that much land. Um, when you're managing land property you're sh really shrinking the footprint of what you can manage but you're also drastically increasing the production that comes from that area um, and making it much more passive than, for example, traditional agriculture. So just some food for thought. Um, hope you kind of start to think that way and, and start looking at plants and see how they grow. And, and when you're making your decisions, don't just think in blocky terms like a computer. You know, really think about what's the, how can I design that tree to lean that way? Um, this thinking can be expanded far beyond the examples I've gave, but given. Um, but just kind of think on that. I think it's useful um, and it's really helpful in, in my designs here and it's really helping me get maximum production. So, all right, y'all. Hope you stay safe, be well, and happy homesteading.